Okay, base setup secrets part two. A couple things to consider. Um, I picked this bridge because most bridges are going to be like this. I have a Babbitt, Babbitt's bridge on most of my bases, and there's no little tiny leg things. It, it works on a cam, and you should check them out. They're really great. But most bridges are like this. They have um, sort of this, um, you know, the legs are like this, and you have to balance out the legs. And this, this bridge is the same here. This is, this is a Badass 2 bridge made by Leo Kwan. Really great bridge. Uh, this one does not rattle at all. Um, badasses don't seem to rattle, but they, they are really heavy bridges and they, they change the sound of your bass a lot. Um, I like it on this one. I'll probably switch it out eventually to Babbitt's. Um, so basically, what you, have to hear, what you have to remember here when you're adjusting your bass is you're moving up the strings and moving down the strings. Both legs have to be even. You can't have it sideways like that. Because if you have it sideways like that, only one leg is going to be hitting full force and the other one's going to have a gap. And, and what will happen is you get a little buzz in there or something. And um, I see this a lot with a lot of uh, basses and just doesn't play well. So it's not transferring all the energy through these two little feet. So these two little feet are doing everything. You have to make sure they're, they're basically Allen set screws. And you can turn them um, like this to make them even or whatever. You want them both, both even when you're adjusting your bass. So what we want to do is bring these bridge saddles up to where you like the bass to sound. Okay, so that's, that's, that's really the, the main thing you want to do. And um, get it feeling really good. And then we're going to strobe tune. But let me talk about a couple other things here. These springs here on these most of these bases, they just put the same spring across everything. So what I do is I cut them down because what happens is, I'll explain it more on this one. Um, you'll see how this, like the on this case, the B string, you see how that spring is all coiled up? This one isn't as bad, I probably cut it already, but what happens with that is it's a lot of pressure so it, so it actually doesn't sit on the bridge sometimes. It just kind of pops up because the spring is, is, is putting so much pressure on the saddle. So what I do is I just take it apart, you just unscrew it from there, and you cut the spring. Just cut it like, you know, don't go crazy, don't cut it in half, just cut like three or four of these little, um, you know, parts of the spring off, and then try it again. And what you want it, you want it to be sort of, so it's keeping the saddle in place, but it's not going crazy. You don't want to putting so much pressure like that that it's it's the saddle is fighting that and it's you know it should be flat on the on the bridge and not fighting anything, so all the pressure of the string is 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 hitting the plate over here and going through the instrument. Okay, that's my little thought on that. Uh, real easy to fix, no worries. Uh, one thing about saddle screws, sometimes the saddle screw will be too low, like um, the screw will be all the way at the bottom. It usually happens on these strings over here, like the B and the E, because, you know, the manufacturers, just, they just put like one type of screw in there. You know, it's like usually the whole, it's all the same size. So if it's small like this, it's only reaching like maybe a quarter up on here. And my theory is, if you've seen on some fender bridges, they're like crooked, is because uh, these, settled, these set screws will be crooked because they're barely hanging on. They're only in the threads like maybe two or three turns, so. What you want to do is get yourself some set screws. And these are number 4-40. That's Fender. That'll work on most Fender guitars, but also works on Badass Bridge. And you just have to find out. If you have a hip shot, it's slightly different. And what you do is just get these on eBay. Um, it's really cheap. And then just get a longer one. You know, they, they have all these different sizes. As you can see here, I have all these different sizes. So, you know, for like a B string or an E string, I would pick one of these longer ones like this. So it's just, it's just a thing where you just have to adjust it. You want it so that it just kind of is flush or just is coming out a little bit. I think you have a lot more mass that way. And the whole saddle has a, a more stable platform than having it um, like this where it's barely in there. You know, it's only like two or three turns into there. All right, so that's it on bridges. Um, let's talk about strobe tuning. The reason you're strobe tuning is because you want, as you go up the neck, you want all the notes to be in tune. What will happen is if this part of your, this is your adjustment for strobe tuning, if it's off, you know, you might go sharp or flat depending on what the deal is. So let's, let's try this. I'll show you how you do it. Okay, I don't know if you can see all this, but 
Oh, don't need this anymore. So what you want to do is you want to play the 12th harmonic, okay? And then you want to look at something like a tuner. In this case, in this case I'm using a logic tuner. And as you can see, right there I'm flat a little bit. Okay, now I'm in tune, sort of. Okay, there we go. Uh, now I'm gonna push down on the 12th fret. And you can see that's sharp. So we don't want that. We want the 12th harmonic, let me go back down here. 12th harmonic and the fret of note to be the same. Hard to get that angle in one shot. Let me see if I can do it for you. Okay, let's try this. So, and now I push down. That's way sharp. And sometimes I don't even bother. I, you know, I try to get it in tune, but I just wanted to see the general inclination of it. And as you can see, that's way sharp. Okay, so how do we adjust that? Well, we go back to the bridge. Let me get that shot again. And basically, if it's sharp, you want to move the saddle that way, that way. If it's flat, you want to move it towards the pickups. Let's put it that way, okay? So in this case, we're sharp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this thing. In this case, I have a Phillips screw driver because in the back of the bridge, what's controlling this screw is a... Phillips head screwdriver. So now I'm going to turn it. Now it's probably going to go a little sharp because that added tension moving the string like that. Let's see. Yeah, it's a little sharper than it was because it was flat before. And here we go. Okay, so now it's just a tiny bit sharp. So go back over here. Do the same thing. There you go. Go back over here. See, now we're sharp, now we have to tune it. Just playing the 12th fret, that's all I'm doing. Okay, 12th harmonic, I'm not pushing down. I'm just touching the 12th fret. And now I'm gonna push down, okay. That's damn close, that's really good. If you push down too hard, it's gonna go sharp. You have to kinda just play like your normal way. And there you have it. Now, of course, this is the last thing that you do. This is after you, uh, you've you adjusted your neck, um, you've done your bridge adjustment, you've, you've raised the strings, lowered the strings, then you do this. When you get it feeling good, then this is the last thing that you do because you want it to be in tune all the way up the neck because when you play chords and, and so forth, you want it to be in tune. And that is how you strobe tune a bass. Okay, so you have the bass uh, tweaked out really nicely. You have it strobe tuned, the neck feels good, everything's happening, the strings are the right height, you strobe tuned it. Okay, so now the last thing that you wanna do is lock down these set, set screws because they will move over time because of vibration. And that's just traveling vibration or whatever else. Um, it just happens over time. Um, what I use is this th uh, Loctite Thread Locker Blue, which is removable, and it just makes it a lot tighter. Uh, it does wear down after a while. You'll see like little blue threads kind of come up and then it'll be really loose and then you know you need to do it again. But that, that could take a couple years, so it's, it's really worth uh, doing. Uh, what I like to do, a little tip here, a little, little uh, secret, is I take my wrench and I magnetize it. That's the first thing I do pretty much with all my tools that are not gonna be touching a computer. Uh, so this, I want this wrench to be magnetic so when it hits the set screw, it holds onto it because it's really small, the set screw, and it's, we're putting this, basically this thread locker glue on it and we want it to grip really well. You can do this with any tool. Anything that's made out of steel, you can magnetize by just, this is just a refrigerator magnet, and I'm just running it across like that. Okay, that's done now. Let's take out the set screw. Okay, that's the set screw, and just be aware that there's two ends to the set screw. There's the end that the wrench goes into, and then the other side, which does not have 
space for the wrench. So you have to you have to put it in the right way. And there we go. Okay. And now <clears throat> we are going to use a thread locker. This stuff will stain. You have to be really careful. Definitely put some paper towels around. That will help you. Okay. And all I'm doing here is putting like one drop. I don't really want more than that. There you go. That's actually too much. So what I do is I just touch the paper towel and that's all you need. Cool. And now we just carefully put it back in place. And you want to just raise it up so that it's even on both sides. The saddle is now level. The saddle should always be level. If you adjust the saddle, you adjust both sides equally. Okay, and now you can see there's a little extra on there. We just kind of dab it with a paper towel. You can use a Q-tip. If you do make a mess and it goes all over the place, uh, use a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol, and that'll take it right off. Just dissolve it immediately. Try to keep it off your paint, of course. You can see I gaffed it. Uh, a little bit of paper towel here to protect my base. And you do that, and uh, now your base is, um, everything's working great on it, and you have your, your set screws locked down. Bob's your uncle.